Hi everyone, tonight we're going to make the transition from the short run to the long run and look what kind of changes we see in graphs, what kind of changes we see in firm behavior as we also discuss the firm and an entire industry. So let's start with the review of the curve we looked at today. You see, you'll recognize the individual firm's marginal cost curve and then the derived short run individual supply curve. Again, the individual firm will produce down to the point where marginal cost and average variable cost intersect. Otherwise, or, or in addition, down to the point where price hits the bottom of the average variable cost curve below which they will produce zero because they can't cover even their average variable costs. Now, you'll notice this curve here. Now watch the next curve. If we assume that all firms have the same marginal cost curve, and that's a safe assumption if you're talking about a perfectly competitive environment, think commodities, people are going to actually have near identical cost curves. And what happens then is you can see now we've derived the short run industry supply curve that looks like this. One more time, going back to the marginal cost curve for that individual firm, then looking at the industry supply curve. You'll also notice that unlike the individual firm and the quantities down here you'll see in single digits, when we go to an industry you'll see multiples of that or rather much higher numbers. In this case we're assuming that we have 100 firms. The firms all have identical cost structures. And so we can go quickly from an output of five in one firm to 500 from all of the firms in that market. You'll also notice we go down to the point where the shutdown price, again, 10, would equal what? That would equal, you'll notice again, the minimum of the average variable cost curve. So that's where the average variable cost curve would cross for this particular industry. Now, Let's start talking about what happens when there are changes in a market. Well, what's going to drive changes in this market? I'm going to go back. I'm going to jump around a little bit, back and forth a little bit, just so we can remember where we are and where we're headed. Here, we had a shutdown price of $10. We had a, an optimal output of 4 because that's where the marginal cost equal, uh, crossed the minimum point of the average total cost curve. That was the market price of $14. Well, let's take a look once we transition from a single firm to a short-run industry supply curve. Let's take a look and consider what happens if that price were in fact $18. And $18 is a profit-producing price. Again, recall that the minimum average total cost price here, intersection point, is $14. So that's where zero economic profit is being made. They're producing at $18. So there's profit in the market. Here's what's going to happen. If the firm is making profits, well, what's going to happen? Additional firms will enter the market. And as we remember from one of our laws of supply, as, in, as more firms enter the market, if there's no change in demand, the industry, the industry supply curve is going to move to the right and again if there's no change in demand the market price will decrease. Well how far is the market price going to decrease and how many firms are going to enter the market? Well market entry will continue down along the demand curve individual firm by individual firm until the bottom of the average total cost curve for each individual firm and as you'll recall just like in this case where the bottom of the bottom of the average total cost curve was 14 you have now a break even price $14 for the individual firm and you'll notice that the market price will be $14 as well two points here the first is at 18 you can see the profit that is being made and you can also see here when the price goes down to 16 and then you can also see the amount in profit that is lost when you go from one price to another price to another price. Okay, again, the important thing to remember here, as profit is being made, firms will continue to enter the marketplace. They were the enter the market price, each making their own individual entry decisions until the market price is driven down to the break-even price. Well, now let's take a look at 
a specific example where you have an increase in demand. So here we talked about the price going up. We didn't talk about what drove that price up. And we saw what, how individual firms made decisions that drove the market supply curve. Let's take a look at here when an increase in demand happens in the marketplace. Well, first step, industry demand increases. It's going to move the demand curve out this way. And what does an increase in demand do? It raises price. And if there's no change in the cost structure, it's going to raise profit, 14 to $18. Well, what's going to happen? As a result of this demand going up, and you can, I sort of ghosted it here. If the industry demand goes up, what's going to happen? Well, more entrants will enter the market. So you'd have entrants from here to here to here to here to here. And similar to this graph, where the price was driven down along the demand curve, you also see price being driven down along the demand curve here. So step one, demand goes up, you're going to see an increase in price. As that increase in price continues to create profits, you'll have more firms entering the market. And the effect of all of that market entry is that the price, market price, point where supply and demand meet, is going to go down. So what does that mean? Well, if I'm an existing firm, what happens to me? Well, I had been producing and getting a price of $18 out here. And similar to prior slides, like this one, where I decreased my price to respond to those entrants in the marketplace, you also see here higher industry output that drives price down, drives my profit back down as well. And now I'm starting to travel down along the average total cost curve. Now, keep in mind that this happens in a perfectly competitive market in an industry where excuse me, in an industry where the barriers to entry are very low. So I can enter and exit the market as a supplier. You see here the, the industry supply curve. I can enter and exit very, very easily. Now, here's another interesting derivation that comes out of this exercise. You see this gray line here. This gray line actually represents the long run industry supply curve in a perfectly competitive market. Well, why is that? You can see price here responding to an increase in demand. Then you see that the supply increases, driving us back down to the same point, in this case, $14. This is likely to happen in an industry where firms have constant costs. So think something like commodities, where whenever there's an increase above the break-even price. More firms will enter the market because the barriers to entry are very, very low. The entry of those firms, by definition, will drive supply to the right, or increase supply, and drive demand down. And what's going to happen is you will have constant motion around this $14 price. And whenever there's an increase in price, more, more firms will enter, and the price will go down. Think corn. If there's a, if there's a year where the corn, the corn has a, a, a spike in price, and let's say domestic corn prices increase because there's a famine somewhere else in the world, prices go way up. Well, what happens the next season? A bunch of people don't plant wheat and they plant corn instead. Supplies go way up and the price goes back down without any change in demand past that first spike in demand where there was a famine. Now, keep in mind this, this can also happen in reverse if there is a decrease in demand. Decrease in demand will drive prices down, will drive, will, drive, uh, will drive suppliers out. Suppliers going out will drive prices back up, and you will constantly be hovering around in a long-run equilibrium price. Okay, so we had a short-run industry supply curve. Let's talk about the long-run industry supply curve. A couple of rules to keep in mind. Again, short-run versus long-run. Long-run is the period of time over which there are no fixed costs. There are three different industry considerations to keep in mind here. The first was where we're talking about something like a commodity where the, the ease of entry was very, very, very high. This created a, a curve that was perfectly elastic, so perfect response 
perfect response to changes in price and changes in demand. The second case is where supply, if it's at least somewhat inelastic, then there are going to be increasing costs across the industry in the long run supply curve is no longer horizontal and it might have a, have a slight upward tilt to it or a, slight, uh, a slightly higher slope. That's going to happen in an industry like hotels, uh, resort hotels, where there is a relatively inelastic supply of beachfront property. You can't make more beachfront actual property, and the, the supply is somewhat inelastic. It doesn't matter what price is charged. You can't make more of that beach, beachfront property. Now, in industries where increased supply creates economies of scale, you might get actually get a supply curve that points downward. And that downward supply could happen in an industry like automobiles, like electric automobiles, where the lithium battery production becomes much more efficient as you have more people producing that particular product. And what you'll end up having is, is an actual downward sloping supply curve because you get so much efficiency as a result. The most important thing to keep in mind here is that the long run industry supply curve is always going to be flatter or more elastic than the short run industry, industry supply curve. Remember, what does that mean? More elastic means more sensitive to changes in price, more sensitive to changes in price in the long run because firms can enter and exit in the long run in a way much easier than they can do so in the short run. We'll talk more in class about this, about this idea of uh, if there is a low level of elasticity, higher level of elasticity, and what kind of industries fall into all of those points. Okay, last but not least, three important conclusions to take about perfect competition. One, the value of marginal cost is the same for all firms. So here we were talking about this idea that in perfectly competitive industries, the cost associated with outputting an additional unit, those costs are very, very similar, if not equal, across all the participants in the marketplace. The second is that each firm has zero economic profit in the long run equilibrium. Well, zero economic profit, what does that mean? Of course, remember, I'm going to produce... I am going to produce at an optimal point where I have intersection of marginal cost and average total cost and revenue, marginal revenue, market price here because I'm a price taker. And as this rule says, I'll earn zero economic profit as a result. If I start earning profit, what happens? Profits go up. Industry competitors will come in to take that profit, take those profit opportunities, then we'll drive the price back down. Third thing to remember is that there are no mutually beneficial transactions go unexploited. Remember the definitions of efficiency. You can't make some, someone better off without making someone worse off. Think production possibilities frontier. Every opportunity to engage in mutually beneficial transactions has happened and people, people take advantage of those. So quick review. What we looked at yesterday, marginal cost curve of individual firm translating into the short run individual supply curve. Taking a look how that makes the industry supply curve. Looking at what happens when we have market prices that are above, that are above the price where we are intersecting, where we are intersecting supply and demand at the long run equilibrium point. What happens? Supply increases. And individual firms will continue to produce down to the minimum of their average total cost curve. We also looked here at what happens when there's an increase in demand, the three steps. And we discussed the short run industry supply curve versus the long run industry supply curve and why the long run curve is always flatter, can actually even be downward sloping in some cases where you have markets with huge economies of scale and decreasing costs across the industry. Okay, that's it for tonight. Have a great night and I'll see you tomorrow.